humans, without a doubt the smartest animal on Earth. Yet we're unmistakably tied to our ape origins. Billions of years ago, we were apes living ape lives in Africa. So how did we get from that to this? What happened? What set us on the path to humanity? The questions are huge, but at last, there are answers. More than six million years ago, we took that first step to separate from the apes. We see the launching of the career that ultimately led to Homo sapiens. Millions of years ago, on the plains of Africa, a momentous event took place. Apes that had walked on four legs stood up and walked on two. Eventually, this change in posture would be followed by a change in their brains. Somehow, over time, they would become us. The search for answers begins here, in the Afar, northeastern Ethiopia. It's part of the Great Rift Valley, a deep cut in the earth where geologic forces are ripping Africa apart. But Zurai Alemzaget has made this forbidding place his life's work. He's searching for the fossilized traces of our earliest human ancestors. Zurai has brought his precious fossil here to the National Museum. His challenge is to release her from the tomb of sandstone in which her bones are encased. He quickly identifies her. She's from a species considered by most scientists to be an ancient ancestor. Australopithecus afarensis, a small chimp-like creature who walked on two legs. It has to be painstakingly removed. He spent hours, hours and hours and days and years and years and that removes the sand grains grain by grain, working every day. He's been at it for eight long years, but the payoff has been amazing. As the work progressed, Zarai revealed an almost complete skull. And tucked beneath it was nearly her entire spine, along with both shoulder blades. Other bones were found nearby. Other bones confirm that Lucy walked on two legs, like us. This is Lucy's pelvis, and uh, in a and you can see how different a chimpanzee is. And the reorientation of these these hip bones in a in a chimp, they're facing straight forward. So here's this is this is what everybody's sitting on in their living room right now. So they're not identical. But clearly, these two resemble each other much more closely, right? Than either one of these uh, resembles the pelvis of, uh, of an ape. But the science of genetics has transformed our understanding with a technique called the molecular clock. Today, scientists can compare DNA from closely related species to find out how long ago they split from a common ancestor. It's just a very simple idea that the rate of change in DNA sequences is more or less constant over time. And that's an extraordinarily powerful concept because it means that you have a way of determining when two species last shared a common ancestor. Living forms evolve because DNA sometimes spontaneously changes as it copies itself. These changes happen at a surprisingly regular rate. By counting the differences between the genetic code of chimps and humans, we can calculate how long they've been evolving away from each other. The dates that one almost always gets are around five to seven million years ago for when humans and chimpanzees last shared a common ancestor. 1,600 miles to the west, at the edge of the Sahara Desert in northern Chad. It's a day. Obviously. 
they found a smashed, misshapen skull around six million years old. And Michelle could infer that from the shape of Tumai's skull. If Tumai's skull is set on the neck of an ape that walks on all fours, his eyes point downward. That can't be right. Set on the upright spine of a biped, his eyes point straight ahead. For Michelle, this proved Tumai walked upright. But is there any other evidence Salam's brain was becoming more human and less ape? To find out, compare a human brain to a chimp's. This is the brain of our closest relative, the chimpanzee brain. It's slightly larger than you would expect of a typical primate for their body size, not greatly so. Scientists look for clues to the evolution of the brain in the folds and furrows on its surface. One important structure is called the lunate sulcus. In chimpanzees, as in many primates, there's this big, deep sulcus here, the, the lunate sulcus. The lunate sulcus is a deep furrow in a primate's brain. It divides parts of the brain related to vision from the rest of the neocortex which is where more complex thought happens. The human brain doesn't have this deep furrow, and the neocortex is bigger than the vision structures, which have moved far to the back. A cast of the brain case, called an endocast, preserves the impression of the brain's surface. Ralph Holloway has a collection of 300 brain endocasts, for many of our ancestors. Like Salam and Lucy, the lunate sulcus, the furrow marking the vision structures, moved back, making room for a larger neocortex, the thinking part of the brain. If you look carefully, what you've got here is a depression that could very likely be the lunate sulcus. And so that suggests then by Australopithecine times that, you, you know, you're having a, a beast that is simply smarter than present-day chimpanzees. Finally, the skulls of a new creature begin to turn up. Is this the toolmaker? The skulls are different from what came before. They represent the dawn of a new era, beginning around two million years ago. This is our era, the era of the genus Homo, humans. The mysterious toolmaker, Homo habilis, is the first of these new creatures. Gone is the projecting snout of an ape. In Homo habilis, the face of humanity is emerging. The true birth of humanity began much further back in time, millions of years ago. Then, do we encounter our ancestor, Homo erectus, in Africa's Great Rift Valley? About two million years ago, new creatures appeared with abilities never seen before in the animal kingdom. Meet Homo erectus, a toolmaker and hunter. One of the first members of our genus, the genus Homo, humans. Arms got thinner, legs got longer, brains got bigger. It was a huge evolutionary step from ape bodies to bodies like ours. And here they are, the actual bones of a human ancestor who lived over one and a half million years ago. It's the earliest human skeleton ever discovered. The Leakies called him Turkana Boy. Now for the first time in a million and a half years, here he is, our ancestor, the Homo erectus called Turkana Boy. In the Homo erectus world, new social relationships had to be evolving. The bonds between mothers and children must have been very different from the apes. The instinct to look after each other. 
It was probably Homo erectus, almost two million years ago, who first started to leave Africa. Ever since, Africa has been the engine of our evolution, pumping out wave after wave ancient humans who populated Europe and Asia. Settling in far off places, they developed in their own special ways. Soon after, another wave left Africa, this time heading for Europe. This was the species that would one day give rise to the Neanderthal. Today, the remains of a young boy who died 100,000 years ago are helping researchers penetrate the mysteries of the Neanderthal mind. And it was here, about 200,000 years ago, that the skulls of a new species start to be found. The last human to evolve, Homo sapiens. Despite the refuges, there is evidence our ancestors were pushed to the brink of extinction. The genetic record shows us that all modern humans are descended from a small population of approximately 600 breeding individuals. They might have been surprised to discover continents already populated by other humans. Remnants of earlier, more primitive migration. As a separate wave slowly moved through the Middle East into Europe, they must have met the Neanderthals. For many years, scientists speculated that early Homo sapiens populations absorbed the Neanderthals through interbreeding. If they did, there would be traces of Neanderthal DNA in our genes today. The idea of mapping the genome of a long extinct species seemed pure fantasy. But that didn't stop Svante Pablo from dreaming about it. The first problem was to get DNA from Neanderthal bones over 30,000 years old. Now scientists all over the world can compare key parts of it to the human genome. And one such comparison is already giving us deeper insight into the Neanderthal brain, the gene called FOXP2. It's the only gene we know of today that's involved in speech and language development in humans. We know that because if one copy is lost in a human due to a mutation, we have a severe speech problem. And the big question was, of course, is that shared with Neanderthals or not? And when we now look at it in the Neanderthal, indeed, it looks to be identical with us. With a technique called the molecular clock, scientists can now find out. That's because DNA mutates or changes at a surprisingly regular rate. By counting the differences in the genetic code of Neanderthals and ourselves, simply comparing the A's, T's, C's, and G's in our DNA, Scientists can calculate how long the two species have been diverging. We can then estimate when there was a common ancestral population, where some individuals went on to become modern humans, some went on to become Neanderthals. It is in the order of, say, 300,000, 400,000 years ago. The timing points straight to the intriguing ancestors who left Africa half a million years ago and buried their dead in the hills of northern Spain, leaving a distinctive pink hand axe at the spot. This is Homo heidelbergensis, who we now know is our ancestor too. In Europe, they evolved into the Neanderthal. In Africa, groups that had not yet migrated evolved into Homo sapiens. That trend, already established in Africa, would become more pronounced as our ancestors spread around the world. Archaeologists have been able to track their movements by the extinctions of large animals. In Europe and Asia, the arrival of Homo sapiens,
coincides with the disappearance of the hairy mammoth, the cave lion, and other large mammals. In Australia, most animals weighing over 100 pounds vanish within a few thousand years of our arrival. The Neanderthals were just one of many species that disappeared when we arrived. For the first time, there was only one type of human on the planet.